are on week three of the Lent encounter already. Andrew Ollerton, who has organised this Bible Society uh, Lent thing to do, has encouraged us this in this last week to think about peace or shalom. Not just the sort of tranquility that perhaps you feel when you're on holiday. For me, that would be sitting on the beach in the sunshine, looking at a lovely view, but rather a calm that transcends the problems and the challenges that we face every day, that we get involved with at work or at home, with friends, with family, but we still have an inner peace. Now, he introduces this by asking us to think about a part of the Old Testament which describes when the Israelite people were exiled. They were forced out of their homeland, 1700 miles away to Babylon, and they lived there as slaves. Now, when he introduced this, he also quoted Psalm 137. And I know this dates me, but my mind immediately went to Boney M. By the rivers of Babylon, where we sat down. Do you remember that? Maybe not. Anyway, at the time, it was one of the highest selling singles of the late 70s. These days, I suspect that there is a realization in society that as human beings, as people, we do need to have that sense of inner shalom because most of our lives at some time or another are challenging. There can be worries and stresses at work and for many people that's very real at the moment. There can be other difficulties at home, perhaps a young baby that isn't sleeping, frustration at the lack of social contact with one another. And I don't really need to go any further. I'm sure you can all get a list together quite quickly. And there's lots of businesses, there's lots of charities that have been set up to help people to think about well-being, mental health, mindfulness, etc. And so it strikes me that actually Christianity, in similar uh, ways to other faiths, was at one time ahead of the curve in this. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, Paul, who was writing from prison, advises the people of the church in Philippi to pray about everything, to take all their problems and issues to God and assures them that if they do that, then they will have this inner peace, something that we find difficult to understand because it will be given to them by God. So I've been thinking in these last few days about how I do that and if I do that very successfully or not. Well, until recently, I would go out with our dog for her morning walk. And while I did that, I would pray about what had happened the day before, about what might be in store in the day ahead, about what was bothering me. And invariably, whilst she dawdled along, sniffing and considering whether to go after any birds that were taunting her along the way, I would come back refreshed. Perhaps I might have noticed the dawn breaking across the sky or perhaps the daily routine of the builders, regular, reliable as clockwork each morning. And the sense of peace that I felt was very real. Sadly, I've no furry partner in crime to take out now. And a gentle yoga session has replaced the walk. It's not the same, but it still sets me up for the day ahead. What do you do to get that inner pay peace, if you do it at all? The Try Praying initiative that I'm advertising on Facebook this month would help you, if you haven't tried it, to give it a go. See you next week. <laughs>